New era of the Chicago Bears have what, what's up with you in the finger in the camera, bro? That's has officially one, started. That's a one <laughs> number drill. one. It doesn't <laughs> number why, one. Why is I want them to like see it. <laughs> I'm emphatic today. I'm emphatic. There we go. The new era of the Chicago Bears have started after the Chicago Bears have traded Justin Fields with all expectations <laughs> to draft Caleb Williams. We're going to talk about have the Bears done enough to really set up Caleb Williams for immediate success. We'll talk about all and more right after this. Into Chicago Bears Central, your number one place for all Chicago Bears news and content. What's going on, Bears fans? Welcome to another episode of Chicago Bears Central, your number one spot for everything Chicago Bears related. C-Dub, Bobby, Steve-O, Hayes, we all in the building today. Uh, it's been a long day, man, between the Bulls game and several episodes. We had a breaking news episode earlier with the signing, and then, of course, the Justin Fields episode happened after that trade went down. But now that everything's kind of settled, people have had hours to kind of come to the realization and the understanding that that Justin is gone and that the era of Caleb Williams is about to begin. Yep. So naturally the question that we want to ask is, and, and kind of add some color. There's a lot of conversation going out there in regards to Caleb Williams. A lot of people saying, Oh, where well, the bears are going to be, it's another three year rebuild. We're going to be bad. A bunch of, bunch of noise and shit. We want to try to clear up some of that noise. Um, have the bears done enough in their moves thus far, which still moves to come. Do you think they've done enough to set up Kayla Williams to be six, a successful quarterback? Again, the whole team's success is just on Caleb. We're not putting that pressure, but for what Caleb needs to do in his rookie year, have the Bears set up it well enough to get for him to have the most success possible? I'm going to say H E double L hockey sticks. Hell yeah, bro. Yes. Would you look at the additions that he made during the offseason? Getting uh, Swift over here to run a running back. He's an excellent addition to add to what we already had in the running back room. Then you add Gerald Everett, who is a football beyond. That dude is a football player. He is a beast. Then you add Keenan Allen, who, Keenan Allen, who is an actual number one on the other side of the field. And you already had Cole commit. They trying to fix the office of last. Still got to do a little work there. And not to mention, you still have some draft picks to be done in the draft coming up. My man, Steve-O said it, and I don't mean to, to stop your, uh, your take when you're coming up. He said, this is the greatest uh, when you talk about weapons, when a rookie came into the league, at least for the Chicago Bears, I'll go that far, that we have ever seen to set them up for uh positive success with this team so hell yeah absolutely yeah, steve-o what was the question <laughs> <He died. laughs> i the got question. you big dog the, have the chicago bears set this man up for success i believe they absolutely did i know there's gonna be a lot of discussion about the trade but it is what it is. It's done. Me personally, I think that you had, I think Ryan Post had to drag this out until he absolutely knew. He knew that as long as you drag this out, there was going to be the risk of not seeing a great return for this. It is what it is. But as far as Caleb Williams, C-Dub gave you everything from the player perspective. I think that now we got to talk about and address the culture perspective. Now you got nothing but offensive minds all through up and out your coaching staff on the offensive side of the ball. I believe you get, you're going to have somebody that knows how to put together a solid game plan, stick to the game plan and adjust if need be, but it's all going to make sense at the end of the day. We seen what Lou gets. He tried to do with Justin Fields and it was an absolute dumpster fire, but now you get mm -hmm. guys like Shane Waldron and then a number of other guys who have experience within this league, within the system that they're one that they, that they're wanting to run. You have multiple guys that are former quarterbacks uh, that's in your, that's in that room that knows the language that knows what he needs to be working on, knows that what he needs to be looking out for. So it's absolutely one of the greatest situations that we ever put a Chicago bears quarterback in, because if you tell me when Justin Fields got here, his, his GM and his head coach was pretty much out the damn door. Yep. And then you, your head yeah. coach didn't even have a plan for him to even develop when things didn't go as planned. So Caleb Williams is in a good place. He should be fine. Now it's all up to him. Yeah, it's pretty much some of the same stuff. Like, to me, like, it is what it is at the end of the day. He took his time to make this trade and everything, but the trade is what it is. But 
as of did he get everything together? I still feel like there's more he can prove from, of course, with the draft coming up. But every from every single person that's currently officially on this team, it's a hundred and thirty thousand percent better than whatever Justin Fields walked into. Yeah. So therefore, it's enough. It's way more than enough. Even if even if they don't touch this wide receiver room again, it's enough. Absolutely. But we know that they will. So, like, like you alluded to, out of every first pick, not first round, first pick, this is probably the best situation a first pick has ever seen in the NFL, as far as I, my knowledge. But to me, you did way more than enough. And, and because of you did way more than enough, because you're going to make this decision for whoever the, the, Q, the QB is, even though, in my opinion, it should be Caleb. You're putting a shit ton of, uh, of a lot of pressure on him because we're not giving him the same excuses. We're not giving him the same grace. And that is what it is. We're giving, of course, he's going to have more time to develop. He's going to have a legit three years. Mm -hmm. But if he ain't developing in that with time, can't, I can't promise you that that shit going to be graceful like others. Yeah, sure. it's a different situation for sure. Yeah. For sure. Yeah, Drip, I want to challenge them on, on Ryan Poles and his decision before you go. Uh, don't we feel like he waited too long? If he was going to make this trade, I think he waited a little too long. And as far as to keeping keeping Justin doing right by Justin, I think he did right by sending him to Pittsburgh. But what about us, Chicago Bears? I think he waited too long. I think we could have got a, a better pick at least if he would have did this earlier. Am I, am I wrong by that? Yeah, I, don't, I don't think you're wrong by that, but I think – that from what I've seen and read, now take that all with a grain of salt, this wasn't about necessarily the pick for Ryan Poe's. It was about getting Justin to the right place because you got to look at it, I guess, from Ryan Poe's standpoint is that if you are that high on Caleb Williams, which you clearly are, mm -hmm. you're thinking that, hey, yeah, it would have been nice to get some more picks, but we send Justin to a place where it makes sense for Justin. There's a natural transition of power between him and Russ there. I think Russ should have retired anyway. And a coach that does believe in Justin, because we've heard earlier, like they still is one of the early favorites for Justin. And Mike Tomlin is high on Justin. So you send him to that type of situation. And then you, you're you're clearing the deck for Caleb Williams. So I think it became for Ryan Poles more. Now, I'm, I'm not saying that I agree with that. I'm just yes, saying that yes. it seems like that that's what Ryan Poles mindset probably was. OK, OK. So. I just. I think he think he yeah. probably dropped the ball. I think you got to make the team better at all costs. Well, yeah, and I agree. Like it should be your team first, right? Yes, and that's that's what it should come down to. But I think that the human element did play a part in this, and I think that's kind of what it is. I, I, I and, and to be honest, like I get everybody saying, like, oh, we trade, we could have got more in the thing. Yeah, we could have, but when you coming down to a decision like this, it's a very important decision. So at this point. If you're going to go in and make the decision, I don't give a fuck how long it takes. I need you to take your time and make sure this is the exact decision you want to make. Just for like all you motherfuckers haters on Caleb are saying, oh, oh, this shit can send us back 20 years. It better the fuck not. <laughs> it better not. <laughs> oh my because, and, and this is why I think he took so long. I'm not finna sit here and make a fast ass reactionary decision when this can jeopardize not only me but this for a chance for the long run and so damn them picks to be honest with you damn them because for one if Poe's going to stay here he's shown us that he can get those picks back he's exactly. shown us he can find us a 4-5 whatever the fuck you want Yeah. but at the end of the day when you, if you're going to go to the decision where you're going to look for a new quarterback I want you to take your time and make sure this is the proper decision you're going to make. And to my knowledge and based on what I'm seeing and the, the news we got, he feel like whoever is in his mind to get picked chosen, he's that guy. So I'm not going to trip on it. I'm going to sit back and see what happens. Yeah, and I'm with you on that. I think that, like, if we was keeping it a buck, I know that was a bit – of the media doing what the media does with you can even get a first round pick and and all of us was like you yeah. know not really if we live in a reality we knew at best it was going to be something around a second or a third but we knew that as the dominoes started to fall around the league Kirk Cousins yeah. going to Atlanta Russell Wilson going to uh Pittsburgh, Pittsburgh. 
and a, a couple other quarterbacks going to other places. We knew, you know what I'm saying? There was a chance to get a, a decent pick, but there was also the chance of you not getting what you feel like you deserve. And Hayes pointed to it, and I think that was the human aspect of it. I think Ryan Pose stuck by his word. He stood by his word and said, I'm going to look out for Justin. And look, I understand, like, the picks, everybody going to be pick pick happy. They want they mm -hmm. want the most picks. They don't give a damn if you get 20 or 30 in one draft. They'd be like, let's, let's keep adding it on. But at the end of the day, bro, you got to get the players that you want. And you got to make the, the tough decisions, even if you feel like you took a loss in one of those decisions. And in this case, Ryan Pose was OK with taking a loss of a high draft pick or a higher draft pick based on what the decision was. OK, yeah, and that's just what it is. Like, I get it. Everybody's going to be upset. I know that the conversation is going to go forever. Well, the Bears should have got more. They got fleece. They got this. They got that. Here's what I'll tell you, and I'm going to be 100% honest in this. I'm not saying that this is a for sure thing that's going to happen, but I am saying that if this happens, if, if Caleb Williams comes to Chicago and in three years we're talking about competing for an NFC championship, y'all not going to be thinking about a six-round pick. Of sure, course not. They can't. They're not. If we so, make the playoffs yeah. next year, they won't be thinking about that six-round pick. That's yeah. for sure. That's for sure. That's for sure. But right now, <laughs> while we in our feelings and we a little blue right now, <laughs> yeah, we thinking of, we thinking about right. that for sure. Yeah, yeah. So, so, how long before Justin take over for Russell Wilson? That's the it case. won't be long. Ru Ru I don't <laughs> I don't think Russ is gonna make it throughout all the week season. Five. So. I said yeah. week three. So, <laughs> he out of there. <laughs> so and and you know I'm glad that Justin's gonna get another opportunity. But like I said, we we focus a lot on Justin on the initial one because he was traded. I want to focus on what this means for the Bears. So looking at how now this team's set up, right? From what we know so far, running back room solid. Wide receiver room, we need a little bit more depth bit. there. Tight ends set, offensive line, some more solid, depth there. Solid. Maybe even another starting level, either uh tackle or, or center there. Um, when you and Shane Waldron doing it right, he he's there. DJ Moore, I already talked about that. Like. Do you think that this team is now at a place where, again, this is not just putting this pressure just on Caleb. It's talking about the offense overall. Where do you see the offense kind of like, Do are we going to have that type of offense where it's going to be, we're going to be dangerous from all over the place? Do you guys think it's going to take Caleb a little bit while to, to acclimate? What, what do you guys expect from the <laughs> offense kind of look like right away? Honestly, based on even with, with some of the things Coach T said, I don't mm -hmm. think this is going to be an offense where we're going to be asking either if it's going to be Justin or Caleb or whoever it is. We're not going to mm -hmm. ask you to throw it all over the yard because that's not Shane Rogers' style. What our style is and what is it is, it's conducive to actually develop a quarterback if you do want to start him day one. Yeah. Run A run game, a true run game, one of the best, Easily top three, top five best run game in the league. So you got that alongside you have a stout defense. Stout defense plus run game is like cookies and cake to a big boy. That's what it is. It, it's, it goes hand in hand. If you got those things next, lined up to them, it's going to work. Let alone you got basically two number ones outside. Something Justin has never seen, and then the the O line has only improved and improved and improved. And like I said, as the as the draft ends, if we do get Caleb or not, I still after the draft we will should feel even more better about the picks that we got with this. But uh, at the end of the day, I feel like we did just enough for him to do whatever he needs to do, but. This this system, more than anything, and I want to paint that picture. He not gonna be over here throwing it like he crazy, unless he just like that. Which I'm not saying he will be. Or he won't. If he like that, he like that. Kudos for us. That's better for us. But if he ain't, I feel like this system is conducive for him to do as much as he need to do to get us to the playoffs. Okay. Yeah. When I. When I look at it, you got to look at it for Shane Waldron, what he did with Seattle last year. They kind of spread it the ball out between all of the receivers. There's no, like, nobody that really separated themselves from the pack. When you look at it, DK Metcalf, he led their uh, receiving room with 66 receptions, and he was just barely over 1,000 yards with 1,100 yards, 14, <coughs> 11, 1114 yards. Then the next guy, Tyler Lockett, which is an absolute beast, 79 receptions 
and he had 894 yards. And then it's it's somewhere around that number for the rest of the for the rest of the guys on the team and the receiving team. So I think they're gonna spread the ball around the field. Uh, the running game maybe it was because of the talent wasn't as high as the the Bears talent I think that's on this team. Uh, it wasn't all that crazy over there. They didn't have a a thousand yard rusher. They did have a guy named by the name of Kenneth Walker. He had 900 yards. So I expect it to be balanced. I think they're going to uh, take it easy. He's a rookie. It will take him a, a little bit of time because it is. This is the National Football League. This is not amateur college, semi-pro college football. So these are the best of the best. So it's definitely going to take a little time for him to get used to it. But I still expect there to be a great offense this season even with a couple games where you little Rocky trying to get your bearings. So they should be okay offensively this season. Yeah. I think that is just going to take some time. Um, obviously this is a rookie quarterback, but I believe that Shane Waldron and this offensive coaching staff along with Ryan Pose with making the moves has built it correctly. In the first few weeks, we should expect the Chicago bears to be, yeah, I would say to just have a simple concept, let them get comfortable. They're going to get them rolling and then kind of like, what the cheese says did with Jordan Love. Oh, now we see how you operate a little bit more in these certain situations. We're going to put you in these certain situations and then start to expand, you know, your play calling a little bit just to get you along the way. I don't think they're going to put too much pressure on them. They're going to set things up and they're going to lean heavy on that run game. We know mm -hmm. that the strength of the offensive line is the run game. And now you bring in some dynamic players. You know what I'm saying? Like Keenan Allen. And then you got one in the backfield to take more pressure off along with Khalil Herbert and the things that Roshan Johnson could do. And you got two pretty much solid tight ends, which is going to – one of them is going to be Caleb Williams' best friend as that security blanket of what I believe. So you can't go wrong. I think it's all set up pretty well. It's just that a lot of us are going to have to come to those terms like, bro, it's not going to pop off the first few weeks if it does get ready for the hype train yeah yeah for sure yeah. i mean and it's gonna be it's gonna be fun to see for me it's fun to watch an offense grow right to watch the offense grow and develop over time to go through their bumps go through their bruises and come out on the other side whatever they're gonna come out like expect the first four to six weeks of the season to be a little rough at, at places it's gonna be rough yeah. Like as just as uh Caleb learns where where the player that's one thing that Justin did know where does Cole commit like to catch the ball o over his back shoulder things like that and Caleb needs to learn that and he's going to learn that and so you know to watch that develop over time is going to be fun to see but I do I do love the weapons that we have here I love the versatility that we have all up and down that roster as well we still got some some damn tough tough decisions to make which is going to be the next topic i throw to you guys so now we clearly know that the bears with their number one overall pick are going quarterback it is what it is whatever happens at number nine though are you got are we going a wide receiver to grow with caleb or are we going with rome if he's there are we going with with whoever falls out of that wide receiver group are we going offensive tackle are we going edge what what do you guys think I'm, now because we talked about it a little bit before right. but now with that number nine pick I'm trading that bit, and I'm not even wasting my time looking at a wide receiver in the first round. That's just okay. you don't even have to. You have two number one wide receivers for a reason. We can't forget that DJ Moore is definitely still young and definitely mm -hmm. one of the best receivers in the NFL. You have that guy. I understand it's going to be a lot of people. Can we still go overkill and go overload and get MHJ? No, it, mm -hmm. that, that'll be absolutely stupid at this point. You go get you, in my opinion, at this point, you in the if you trade back, not too far though, and you go get you continue to bend the build the trenches and go get you an edge. It'd be kind of it'd be kind of like what the Texans did. They went and got C.J. Stroud, boom, made a move, traded up, went and got Will Anderson. Now you got two cornerstone pieces, and this could be the same damn thing right here. I'm leaning towards that one too, base, but I. Depending on where um JPJ go, the center at Oregon, mm -hmm. if he drops to you, get him. I'm and if that. what else that if you don't if he not there, just best best availability on a D line. Whoever's the best, the best talent there, just get him there. For sure. But I'm, I'm not keeping that pick. Go ahead, see dog. Yeah, yeah. I'm 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 with both for a little bit of both of y'all, but I also say, but it, which is probably not gonna happen, but it might happen. Uh if one of those two wide receivers, not MHJ, but 
if the LSU right. guy, uh, 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 yeah, and Malik, if, yeah, and Malik, if they drop down the nine, you, I think you got to get them. Or Powers d- drop down the nine, you got to get them. Otherwise, trade the picks. You only got four of them, so it's time to trade and get some more, some more picks out here in this draft coming up. So. Wait, that's a tough decision too. But, but yeah, I mean, decision. we say it is easy, but like my yeah, thing is, it depends not. on to me who falls because yeah. if 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 one of those guys, if, if for example, like you said, Powers drops, I I, I get I get the, the the thought process behind. You know, I guess you could trade back and still get Powers depending on how far you go. But it's like who's there at number nine? Because if it's a talent that you just if Dallas Turner falls at number nine, it's going to be hard for me to say let's not take Dallas Turner because it's a position of need. No, bro. Sure. So, I mean, if it's, it, I mean, you said it a few uh shows ago. If it, if it's, if it's a guy on your board, fuck the picks, bro. Get your yeah. guy. Like, Get and I guy. think that, like, we kind of alluded to it when the with the breaking news thing is that at some point, bro, you got to get your guys. And Steve-O just said it not too long ago. Fuck the picks, bro. Like, you, you, yeah. you didn't spend some money and you got some really, really good players. I understand if you can trade back. But if it's a guy that's absolutely on your board, figure it yeah. out. A uh, uh, figure it out in another round with mm-hmm. another pick. Get your yeah. guy. Yeah, I agree with that, one hundred percent. Yeah, we'll see, man. We'll see. Uh, this is it. This is it. This is uncharted territory as far as like for us having this show, right? Because we came in with Justin being there, right? Yeah, now we get to see a new quarterback come in from the ground up. We're going to get to see how this thing b- builds out and develops. And the Caleb Williams is coming into a good situation because the defense is in a really good situation, right? Uh, really good place. You got you got all the weapons on offense. You got your offensive coordinator. So it's going to be fun to see how, how it grows and develops. And I know people are, are, are concerned, and they have their concerns on, hey, if this doesn't work out, we're going to be right. Are we going to be right back doing the same thing for Arch mm-hmm. Manning in 2028? That's what oh, people are asking. Yeah. I'm gonna yeah. choke somebody if that's the I'm telling you right now. Bro, we can't oh, keep bro. doing this, bro. We got to stick this one all. This right motherfucker out. better be it. We that's got to. We can't keep doing this. This is a we revolving need, door, bro. We gotta we keep. We gotta do solid. This. We gotta make it work. Ten plus years, bro. Hey man, yeah. and I'm gonna tell you, bro. I'm blue. I'm blue right now, but I'm kind of excited to see something. You know, you just dark. I'm the same. Right? Hey, talking about, how the hell you get the, uh black rangles? Yeah, but if, if, you, if, you, if you need somebody blue. to be called blue black before, that's what I was just about to nah, say. Hey, I'm chocolate black. Hell nah, I don't know. Black. It depends on how the light hits you and how much sun you had. It's been <laughs> winter. We go, we going into the summer. You about to, you about to get blue black again? Your face, your hair, and your skin be the same color after August, yeah. bro. Can I say that, bro? They just be mad at us, bro. Can I just say, can I just say this for both sides, please? For the love of all best fans, they, they ain't gonna listen, Steve. They not gonna but I'm listen. Just saying, some of y'all are really ridiculous, just really beyond the ridiculous on both sides. All you motherfuckers saying, "Oh, Caleb's trash." Stop saying that. All you motherfucking Caleb's fans. Oh, I'm glad to get him out of here. Shut the fuck up. Be happy. Be excited for your thing. Stop having to trash one or the other. Y'all sound problem. like some fucking middle school kids yeah. in here fighting over some shit. Oh, you a bitch. You ain't gonna do... Shut the fuck up. This is our QB now. I'm not... I'm sorry. I'm not one of those people that live in the past. I'm looking straight. Thank what you, Joe. Everything you did, I understand. He that we we did you bogus. I understand. Yes, definitely. We did you a hundred and thousand percent bogus. Absolutely. I get it. But the, this life is not fair. The NFL is not fair. It's not but right. y'all got to stop this shit about shitting on one and pulling somebody up. And I understand that. To yeah. add on, do we all remember how Josh Rosen got did in the NFL? <laughs> Justin Field is not is has not been done worse than that, but the Bears did screw him. <laughs> they did, yeah, they and did. the thing that people need to realize is that two things can be true at the same time. So many people be arguing about shit like it's this absolute when you can look at it and be like, okay, yeah, that's true too. Keep it fucking pushing at that point in time. Could Justin Fields have been done dirty? Absolutely. Did he have the weapons? Did he have the offense? Nobody should be sacked as many times as Justin Fields. Was some of that on him? Yes. Two things can be true at the same time. And so Justin Fields was done dirty, and he still has tons of things that he needs to work on, period. Yes. Two things can yes. be true, true at the same time. 
anybody who makes the argument, well, he got done dirty. That's the only reason. No, part of it was he like and, and make no mistake. Some of it's still on the Bears. Justin Fields had some, the, some of the highest potential of any player we have ever drafted as a franchise. The Bears couldn't develop it out of him. It didn't happen. That's a failure on the franchise, too. They decided to, to not double down on that failure. They moved on. They're bringing in somebody new. And so far, they've set uh, whoever the next quarterback is to be in a much better situation and scenario. Great. That's it. That's it. I've already seen people asking, can we, or can we are we going to trade the number one overall pick for Herbert? No, they didn't do this to trade for fucking Herbert, bro. Like, it's not happening. No. Like, stop trying to cook up scenarios in your head. That like, this crazy. is Madden to try to make a fucking point. It's that. not <laughs> happening. Deal with it. This is the realization of where it is. Now, like I said earlier, is there a chance that it could be a quarterback other than Caleb? As long as Ryan Poles is our GM, yes. I'm going to say that there's always a chance for some other shit to happen. Period. That's just what I'm going to say. I'm always going to give a chance to that. But it still does not change the fact that a new cornerback cornerback a new quarterback will be under center for the Chicago and then that's another thing for the people who are saying oh we drafted a quarterback that never played under center have you not watched college football there aren't very many college football quarterbacks nope, that play under center that's this is fact. why that's when true. a quarterback in college plays under center we say they played in a pro style offense you know why it's called a pro style offense because usually in college the motherfuckers don't play under center educate right. yourself y'all just talking to talk at this point in time Justin fans, Caleb fans, everybody's just talking. Nobody's listening. Nobody's researching. Y'all just seeing somebody say some shit and regurgitating the same shit that you saw. That's why people like Smear60, who's been on the Caleb bandwagon this whole time, oh, he's, he's, he's educated. Caleb, uh, Smear 60 could tell you why he wanted Caleb Williams here. He's not saying, oh, well, he's just a blind generational. You go and do your research. Y'all saying shit to try to sound smart and sound like fucking idiots, bro. No, Period. All right. And just oh, you got you got quarterback that didn't play under yeah. center. Justin didn't play under center that much as a college quarterback. I'm an that. OSU fan. I watch every single OSU game. <laughs> I live in Columbus. It's religion here. Y'all got to chill out, bro. Y'all got to chill out. You, they're not under center. That just makes it harder to evaluate. That don't mean he can't. That just make it harder to evaluate. We can't. We don't know. If he can be successful on the center, that don't mean he don't know how. That's why I was sitting here complaining. I said it for Justin. Why did you go to OSU? Why did you, if you want to be labeled or you want to know everything, you want to put your best self in position to be a quarterback, go to a pro style office. That's why I was crying for Caleb. Go to Bama. So we won't even have to think about it. We'll just know the reason why. You know why Jaden Daniels shot the hell up? Because he said, I'm not doing shit in this Pac-12. I'm going to a pro-style office at LSU. Mm. And now he's a Heisman and probably the second pick uh, out of all the quarterbacks. For sure. I would That's agree all I'm that. saying. We're not saying we don't know what we don't know what he's gonna do because it's hard to see if they can do it. But based on what he's done, they don't mean he can't. For sure. Yeah. Yeah, that's it. Like it, it's it's not that difficult to understand when you aren't so busy focused on narratives and you're most so fi focused on the facts. We keep trying to tell y'all that for months. It's facts over fucking narratives. Like it's not that fucking hard. And to saying y'all be wrong. Don't that, that, oh, hold on, hold on, hold on. Wait, don't worry. Don't wait. Don't no. Don't worry about it because we got Martell ass first of all. Because listen, I I you know I stay ready. You ain't got to even worry about it. Because let, let's let's go to my let's go to my drawing board. Martel, bro, first of all, why you got that old dusty ass gold tea, bro? You can't even grow a goddamn beard and you 65 fucking years old. That damn that damn Tommy Hill figure fucking bears jacket that you got on, that motherfucker came out in the 90s. Everything about you is dusty. Thomas, so we were so wrong. We said what we thought our opinion on what we wanted the Bears to do. We always yes. said that it was that it was an option for them to do it. So shut your dusty, old, crusty ass on. Trying, I, I know you be sitting outside the corner store telling motherfucking sixteen year olds. Now you know Uncle Martell gonna take care of you, right? <laughs> shut, shut your bitch ass up. <laughs> Don't become a victim. I keep telling y'all. Y'all be cheap, keep trying to be the story. I'm gonna make y'all the story. I'm gonna put you on the summer jam screen. Chill the fuck out. 
Oh, look at y'all. Y'all something else. Like, that's what we talking. We're talking about some emotional. No, nah, you just as dumbass, bro. Like, you don't even know what the fuck crying is. Damn. You old lame ass bastard. You stupid. <laughs> like, you, you just old dumb. For that re- you, you just too stupid. Old. You too old for that response. My like, niece you and nephew say that shit. Oh, you're mad. Dude, you uh, 50. <laughs> talking about are you mad? Leave <laughs> oh, that to your grandbabies. You oh, exactly, grand. bro. You've been you you've been you've been going through your grandkids' text messages, learning new phrases, huh? Dumbass. Yes, it's bogus, bro. Yeah. Anyway, look, yeah. If for the people that watch every single day, that tune in, that that tune in with the squad, they know where the hell we stand. And a lot of people <laughs> that's gonna come in here, y'all coming in here, and y'all gonna be talking shit. Talk your shit. Who cares? Talk your shit. Go Cause we get. cool right where we at. Number one spot <laughs> for a reason. And then we've been said that anything can happen. I ain't get bad. Clowns. Man, y'all keep talking y'all about this man out. nails. And y'all keep talking. Mother- but, but wait a second. Y'all Dwayne y'all Wade. Dwayne Wade literally said y'all. he painted his nails since he was ten years old. And that y'all man won the championship from Chicago when that That's nigga from Robin. Yeah, y'all, y'all just be picking yeah. y'all chosen narrative. Y'all got to chill. Like I said, let them motherfucker yeah. throw fifty damn touchdowns. Y'all gonna be having hey, y'all I'm not apologizing to you. Yeah. I said what I said, bro. <laughs> apologize? <laughs> what? <laughs> now, what? Now, now, see, this is where another mo- dumb motherfucker. Now you came in here saying I apologize because y'all always do shoot straight. Now you over here talking about Brad. B- fuck Brad Biggs, old funny looking dusty ass. Like what the fuck? I don't give a fuck what he heard us say. Tell him to pull up. Yeah, ain't nobody afraid of Brad fucking Biggs. What the hell are we what talking about? Hell, Brad he's been wrong on more things than he's been right on. And guess what? One of the things he's been wrong on is that goddamn haircut. Any any motherfucker of y'all motherfuckers in YouTube man watching us right now, I just want you to think twice before you say some shit. Because we honestly we don't give a fuck about what you say. Just watch what you say. That's it. We don't know how to we, once it once shit gets started. I don't know how to stop. <laughs> and ain't no death for where I'm gonna stop it. <laughs> yeah, that's funny. <laughs> oh me. That's funny. That's and listen. If if he if Caleb Williams takes us to the Super Bowl, you motherfuckers is gonna have Chicago I Bear laden sla- green paint on y'all fingers too. <laughs> <laughs> y'all gonna have to samurai the samurai shit with the sword with the dress on. Ready to go, bro. That is hilarious, bro. That is h- hilarious. Nah, but uh, like like we said, man, y'all got to get over it. It's gone. It's over with. Stop attacking this man, Caleb. For for I get because I guarantee you this: if he if he paints fuck uh, Green Bay on his nails and beats the motherfuckers, gonna be everybody gonna shut up. Scary. It's gonna be Come twenty thousand motherfuckers yeah. with Green Bay on their nails. Fuck Green Bay on their nails. That's yeah, exactly. exactly. Right. And that's the funny thing. I can't take none of y'all serious. That's saying that if you're a fan of Dennis Rodman. That's the <laughs> yeah. That's the Dennis won't dresses. He won't wedding dresses. That nigga, that nigga, I just told Bobby and that nigga got a new tattoo of a random bit on his face. We don't even know who she is. No, no real. He probably met her one time night in Korea. Like that's yeah, it. Oh, no, like, no, 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 definitely was. <laughs> <laughs> Song Tong Sally, she famous. You stupid, out there. bro. You dumb. Hey, you bro, dumb. chill out on that on the first lady, though. Let me get you up out of here. Don't even play with her. Oh, oh, see, yeah, yeah, about yeah. Cash, let's get these super hey, chats before we get up. Let's, 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 let's get to these super chats before we get up out of here. Sherrod Curry though. with the super chat. Thank you for supporting the channel, brother. We got Brett in the building. Says, Come on, man. Six round pick. That's disrespectful. Waiting too long or not. I mean, listen, at the end of the day, it's what you value. And it, like we said, it doesn't seem like Ryan Poles is really focused that much on it. Now, I'm not saying that it's right. I'm not saying it's right. I'm just saying what the mindset was. Now, at the end of the day, would I like them to got more for Justin? Absolutely. But I think once Atlanta went Kirk Cousins, that was our best chance to get the most compensation, to be honest with you. Oh, my God. I'm just looking at the mailbag's going to be crazy. Oh, bro, the mailbag's probably already crazy. I don't know how many words we got in since the trade went Bro. Oh, listen. So since the trade happened, we one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We got nine voicemails just since the trade. Oh, uh, get ready for I'm honestly, that. I'm honestly surprised it's, it's that low to be honest. Yeah, with you. it'll be. Sherrod it'll be Curry bad, says, uh, first pick for Herbert. No, not no. Ugh. What are Jim we Harbaugh doing? Bro? Went the last running back Herbert. traded for a first round pick, <laughs> and it damn sure ain't gonna be no fucking Herbert. Herbert. Jesus, he good too, bro. But no. He ain't, um, he's not even fourth round good, but let's continue. 
I love Fields as our QB, but as a Bears fan, you know, uh, they could not pass on Caleb and the potential of him being great. I mean, okay. I got to be said with that. It is what it is. So yeah. You better be right. That's all and I got to say. And I don't, don't, don't mistake that I do think C.J. Stroud being as good as what he was That's in year nice. one also made them think – and realize, can we really take the chance of passing on another quarterback and him turning into the – because if Kayla would have went to whatever team and looked like C.J. Stroud again and would have happened again, Jesus Christ. Hey, man, do he – that's a good question. Do he got more, Caleb? If He's going to get drafted, so I'm going to just say it. Do he got more than what C.J. Stroud had last yes. season? Yes. 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 As a talent-wise, yes. Yes. That's yes. why we telling people, like, bro, like, he should – he's being placed in a solid situation, bro. So he should excel. If everybody, if, if we believe that he's as good as everybody's telling us, he's the generational talent. He's the next. Look, I don't. I don't think it's unfair, but they're they're saying he's the next Patrick Mahomes. This situation, he fair. should be good. Yeah. Even though I think that comparison yeah, is unfair, they should not compare him to Patrick Mahomes. He's not that. So. But I think it's how you frame the comparison, like because I could see people saying he has similar skill set because like we talked about, there's caliber and then there's skill set. You could have the same skill set as somebody, but not be the same caliber of player as them. Right. Of course. And yeah. I think he has similar skill set things that you look at as Patrick Mahomes. But of course, the national media doesn't present it that way. They just compare it as like, oh, he's, he's going to have a Patrick Mahomes type impact. And it's like you said in. Because And the national media doesn't understand the power that they wield. Like I've said before, many times on both Bears Central and Bulls Central, most sports fans don't watch the games. They watch box scores. They catch a couple of games or a quarter when they can. Most sports fans aren't watching the NFL. They're not watching tape. They're not looking at the breakdown. They don't understand schemes. They don't understand that. They they And they look for the national media to inform that. So when the national media starts comparing somebody blindly to Patrick Mahomes, you're going to have thousands of people who take that and run with it, not really knowing what they mean by that comparison because they don't follow the sport in and out like we do, right? And it's yeah. it, it creates then a, 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 a it, like I've said before, most sports fans are like Drake fans in the sense that mm. Drake fans who don't truly understand hip hop and try to say, oh, Drake's the best rapper ever. You don't even understand the culture of what MCing is, but you put in that place because of Drake being same thing. People don't really understand what goes into these sports because their their opinion is formed by the, the, the box score and whatever the national media is saying. It just is what it is. You cook yeah. right there for sure. So Justice, still, I mean, Caleb still got six games to get it right. I'm good for him, though. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, not playing with it. Y'all heard Jayden my man. Says the, the Bears can still trade for a haul and get Jaden Daniels. Just not sold on Caleb. Glad this ordeal is practically over. Stillers are my second team now. Here's what I'll say. It doesn't matter what our evaluation is. It matters with Ryan Poles and Kevin Warren. I've been saying that for the longest, even with my own opinion. And I get it. Yeah, could the Bears still trade down and get a different quarterback if that's what they want to do? Potentially, but here's what I'll say as well. Now that Justin Fields is gone, you, you're and you still we everybody knows you need a quarterback. You're not going to drop lower than the top three. That compensation you're not going to get quite a haul for. You may get a couple of more picks, but the 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 time for a haul that's done. That, now, that's been long, long, long time. That's done. Yeah, like, like extra pick at this point. That's yeah, about it. No, nah, nah, it's, it's Caleb or nothing. You need to stop it. It's I believe be that's Caleb. that's the only way you do this. It's nothing. It's Caleb yeah. or nothing. Nah, that's what I'm saying. Dang. Jay Riller says, damn, so we're going to win another seven games if, if that because we have to rebuild chemistry again so realistically. Uh, we aren't going to the playoffs with the rookie no matter. No, that's not true because, again, chemistry, this whole team for the most part has chemistry. And then, again, the defense. You have to look. The Bears have a defense, the bones of a defense, if things keep progressing, that can get you to the playoff off the nature of the defense alone, that can get you near there. So all you got to do is have a competent offense in more than enough games. Nobody's saying that Caleb Williams needs to come in being this gunslinger <laughs> throwing for 4,000 yards, except Steve-O. steve definitely saying that. But, you know, well, it, but well, I'm, just, just I'm, just fuck, I'm just fucking with you, bro. I literally just fucking with you. You can't fuck with them with these <laughs> stupid motherfuckers in here. <laughs> oh, I didn't even. I didn't even. <laughs> For real, somebody just said Bo Nick's the best quarterback in the draft. <laughs> hate smoking. Bro, what hey, hey, I'm an Oregon fan. That is not true. That motherfucker <laughs> not even. I like Bo. Come on, I like Bo. I like Bo, but no. Uh, but uh, so listen, I do think that no, this team is going to win more than seven games. I feel right now, and that's without this thing even being fully uh together. Here's what I'll say with this as well to kind of counteract your thing. We knew that Justin Fields still had development, right? Yeah, 
yeah. and that you would have still expected this team to win more than seven games next year. Caleb yes. is coming in, and he has to develop a lot of the same things that Justin had to work on. The difference yeah. is he's coming into a much better situation. Absolutely. So I'm not saying put the pressure on Caleb. Again, I'm saying because the team is in so much of a better place that they are better. Uh, they are in a better place to withstand Caleb going through the things that he needs to develop. So we'll see. What you laughing at, Steve-O? Somebody talking about Oregon got the best weed though. <laughs> like, where, where, where no, 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 have you have you had have you had weed in 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 Washington State, not DC, Washington State? They I got have. some good weed up there. I got some good weed. The, up there. the best ones to me is Colorado, but and Washington State. Yeah, Washington Cali, State's pre rolls is some different shit, bro. Like you got to be prepared for you. Got you can't come in last. I ain't gonna lie. Some of y'all need that right about now. <laughs> <laughs> I need that right about now. I ain't gonna lie. All right, Deontay Johnson, Johnson, Johnson says, "What up, fellas? Has everyone forgotten that Ryan Poles helped build the little team in Missouri? That man ain't. Uh, that man at quarterback. Trust the process. There, this was always gonna happen. Well, Ryan Poles didn't help develop shit. He doesn't develop anything. He's not a coach, but he was in the room. He was part of that decision that that group made. Absolutely." Yeah. So, yeah, you just put it yeah. together, man. And I think the With chemistry, will be a, bro, I think chemistry will not be an issue. Me personally, because Jalen Johnson already came out and said that hey, we're gonna rally around this guy, and I'm gonna take him for his word. And these guys understand that it's a business. And Brian Pose, I'm pretty sure, was straightforward with these guys and let them know that he's gonna. This could be in your future, so and, they was already expecting it for sure. And a point too to make is that keep in mind, look at the chemistry DJ Moore and Justin built in one. Training camp together. Yes, yes, that's right. All right. You never know. That's right. If he's, he's good, good DJ, there will be no issues. If he's yeah, Zach he's, Wilson, it's going to be a dumpster fire. <laughs> he's still, I think he still got to prove it to the locker room. Bro. Yeah, he has yeah, to sure. love yeah, Justin. He's got to win. He's he got to win in yeah. the locker room. But that's yeah, any room. Yeah. 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 Have the Bears ever had a Heisman winner before? I don't know off the top of my head. I'm sure somebody has had to win a Heisman. That's been on. We've been around for over 100 years. We had to have a Heisman winner. So. Even if we did, I don't care. I don't do <laughs> this is great for Justin as well. This is the do-over he deserves. I agree with that. I agree with I that agree as well. I agree with that as well. So. Uh, dang, see, it's always funny people call me CEO. Like, my name is Hayes. Anyways, Caleb is going to crash out. Drake May is the safe bet. Chicago better reconsider. You don't want to go more, with the safe bet in this. You're, if you make more, this play, you're going for the upside. You're going for the upside. I'll tell y'all right now. If we get somebody other than fucking Caleb or Jalen, I'm going the fuck off. <laughs> what if they end up winning, though, Steve? Or what if they end up being the right decision? I didn't say I wasn't going to understand what we're going on as a future i just said i'm going to fuck off oh okay that's an initial reaction because that's not what you're <laughs> supposed to do in this situation you go get the motherfucker everybody you saying can't be missed oh, i feel that hey man Let's you talk. Can. Bull says, you know, he owed who names the kid Martell. That's that's a hell of a that's yeah, a, one that's a That was a decision. That was a decision to make. Five hundred in the chat, so we need five hundred yeah. likes. Give me a uh, a job, Hayes. I'm promoting y'all. Shot town up, bear down, playoff. Shout battle. out to my guy, K two knucklehead. Hey. Uh, whatever your name is, you annoying as hell. You getting out? <laughs> oh shit! I see. I'm reading the thing. I don't even know what he said. What he say? He just being annoying. Like, shut up. It's a it's Get a couple out. goofies. I'm just giving a couple a goofies shot. in the chat. It's a couple goofies in the chat. Y'all hey, <laughs> get blicked down. Y'all get blicked down. That's on y'all. Uh, all right. Let's see. I know uh, losing JF one hurts, but they. <laughs> Say the best way to get over someone is to get under someone. So I guess we should get behind Caleb first. <laughs> Why you, you, you go? Why you go with that bar? Like, of all the way of all the analogies you could have used, that's the one you decided. You what kind of beat? What kind of beat did he shit oh, you on? Oh my god! <laughs> not puffy. Not puffy. You trying Great to out look, my brothers. Been telling, for real. <laughs> been telling fools the same you've been saying this whole time they just don't listen keep up fellas yeah like some people don't listen they hear hey yeah no i like justin like, oh my god you only you're justin sexual That's you just I want mean. justin it's like no i just said that i like justin as a player i would love to see him get an what opportunity with a better staff like, like you can like a player what the <laughs> fuck and then it's the flip side I, I will i like justin but i could see what we could do with with kayla you're you're y'all bipolar y'all switching oh, yeah, up oh yeah the person y'all switched up on justin fields like what yeah what? that was crazy i remember that that was nuts <laughs> We like what? 
What happened? Yeah, what damned if you do, damned if you don't. That's why we can't give a shit, man. It is what it is. We still love y'all, though. Y'all crazy, though. We love y'all, though. <laughs> me. That's funny. All right, y'all, man. He's That's it back. for tonight. You got any anything left before we get up out of here, fam? Oh, grab no, man. Hey, let's get wine. ready for the future. Let's ready. Yeah. Grab y'all favorite I'm wine. Excited. Grab y'all favorite thing. I'm going to let y'all soak for the rest of this season. But I'm telling y'all right now, I'm not dealing with y'all shit Monday. <laughs> oh, oh, it's over. I agree, Steve. Let them eat y'all. Yeah, I'm let y'all soak for the oh, rest yeah, of the weekend. Oh, yeah. But as Monday, we Bears fans. Yes. Let's move the, the hell on. Bro. Wrap this shit up. No, bro. God, yeah. hey, I ain't finna be kidding. Hey, I'm definitely wrap this shit all, up. Man. Prepare for what's about to come on Monday with all the major headlines. This will be the number one story. Get yep. ready for that and the no you know the the fall off on Tuesday and we should be good to go. Look, it look it, it stings a little bit to see my man's walk out the door. I still got the JF1 shirt. I'm still going to keep that bitch. I don't give a damn. I'm a Bears fan and he was one of the best players I've seen in a long time in the Bears uniform, at least one of the most exciting ones. Hey, he tried. He fought hard. It didn't work out. It's business. You make tough decisions in business. And shit, it's time to move on. Shot town up and better fuck down. Move on. Bro. If you're a clown that joins the chat, we will cook your ass. So tread lightly. Oh, Have a nice bro. night. Good shit, nephew. Hey, man. All I got to say, if you really gangster Caleb, come get number one over here in Chicago. <laughs> he I it. dare you. I he dare it. you. Bro, this <laughs> I dare you to do that. I, I you dare really like you. That. I dare you to go take one. If Caleb Williams was to take number one, I'm with it. Let me see, bro. At that point, I'm like, hey, listen, fuck all me saying take patience. No, now you, now you gotta show up, my god. Yo, I just want to see what the fucking reaction because the media go kill his ass. That's that's really what it's going. Get be. gangster. Let me that's see. That's funny. Is that, it's just gonna be funny to me because I know he don't have a clue what he's walking into if he do that. That's he don't have a man. Lily. He don't understand the magnitude of what he would do if he did that shit. <laughs> yeah, remember when Michael Carter Williams tried to come in here and take number one? Oh yeah, oh, oh yeah, yeah, bro. Yeah, yeah. he tripped. Mm. And but I will say this, and I told y'all this earlier. <laughs> I don't care how y'all feel. I want Justin to smoke our ass in a regular season every uh, single time. Well, I but don't. the playoffs, I don't. I do. I mean, I'm not going to say I want us to lose to nobody. I don't want us to lose. Like, like, don't get me wrong. I'm petty. I I, I like Justin as a player, but now he's an op. I don't want, I'm not going to like, in Chicago, you, now my guy. No, no. You and I. I, I want I want well. I want I want us to, him to be like Bobby Portis if Ty played a pool. <laughs> <laughs> hey, there's a fucking dog at right every game. Man. Like, hey, that shit that gonna is be hilarious. hilarious. Some that of y'all funny, ass man. just talking. Ain't nobody even. They just talking like like you know, y'all ass. Y'all not Bears fans. We've dropped twenty eight episodes in six days. You think we not Bears fans? Shut the fuck up with that. Not Bears. <laughs> That's fans a new shit. guy. Yeah, that's, that's like, like you you just dude. you you don't think what I, my opinion isn't coming out of your mouth? Oh my god, yo, you're not a real Bears fan. Shut the fuck up. <laughs> I forgot. I shouldn't have said that. I'm sure a, a lot of y'all are so slow, y'all can't fucking understand sarcasm. Oh, it, it, in the show, I'm before I go off. All right, we love you guys, man. Shout <laughs> town up, bear down. We about this mug. Shout out to Melton, man. Oh, uh, Martel, uh, that was his name, Martel. R.I.P. to Martel, man. We smoking oh, Martel for the rest of the night. <laughs> Peace, y'all. Smoking that huggle